Welcome to the Grueling Chew Show, The Real Deal. I'm your host, Josh Benjamin. You can follow me on Twitter with the Twitter handle at CoachJB4 or on Facebook, of course. My show is on various sports topics, and my show will be available on our website, thegruelingtruth.net, also on Spreaker, Stitcher, Google Music, iTunes, and now iHeartRadio with the search phrase Grueling Truth to listen to our show anytime you like. Now, today... We're going to have multiple topics that we're going to talk about, and I kind of want to start out uh, with uh, kind of what I'm doing right now uh, in course of the media and how a media affects sports today and as opposed to the earlier years, uh, the 90s, 80s, 70s, and so on. So first I'm going to talk about today. Uh, We have a lot of social media out there such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, um, all those different types, and everyone that has access to that, that is, I believe, 13 years of age or older, and they can post pictures, they can put opinions, they can say pretty much whatever they want. And that's a little scary because nowadays the media, including those different social medias, affects sports. Well, how does that happen? Well, first of all, athletes can post pictures of of themselves, of their family, of whatever they're doing, or have others take pictures for them and they post them on their own profile. But they also put their opinions, whether it's controversial, whether it's about a coach, a player, a teammate, the game, fans, um, etc., or any other thoughts in just a general uh, area, which nowadays you get a chance to understand the athlete probably a little bit more than what you used to. Um, because back in the day, I say back in the day, I would say in the 90s and, and moving backward, you, you don't really get a chance to see or hear from them a whole bunch unless they're on an interview on the radio, interview on a show, on a television show, uh, newspaper interviews, um, things like that, or just watching the game in general on TV. So you really didn't get a chance to see who they truly were. And nowadays scary or not scary, however you look at it, you get to see those players at different angles, good or bad, however you, however you choose to do so on that. Now, the good thing about being a fan nowadays is that those social medias are there, and you can follow them and, and kind of watch what they do and say, and it's almost like creeping on them, really. Um, but in a sense, it's way more uh, personal, uh, if you call it that, uh, today than, than it used to be. And good or bad, it's there. It will probably always be there. And the fact that we are clicks away from interacting with them or you know discussing things with them, if they do happen to reply, or post pictures of, of them during a game or maybe you got a picture with them or whatever the case may be, it's there. And nowadays, that's good and bad for both sides. And I'm kind of going to explain that a little bit. Now, for the players, they, they, this is a great PR move for, for them. It could be, I guess. So how does that happen? Well, obviously, if, for example, I'll give you a perfect example. Brandon Phillips, the Cincinnati Reds second baseman. I follow him on Twitter, and basically all I get from him on my Twitter feed is pictures of him with fans before the game or after the game. And it's amazing. That's, that's great. That's hopefully showing his personal side and saying, hey, th- this game's also part of the fans as well, and getting pictures with younger kids, getting pictures with adults, anyone essentially, and posting those and, and, and tagging them, or maybe the fan tags themselves, and shares that with people that follow him. And I think that's amazing. I think that's the positive part about it when it comes to Twitter, Facebook, or any other social media, is that the interaction with the fans most likely will be a positive one. Now, on the other hand, there could be a negative aspect to this. For example, and this will always boggle my mind to the end of time, college athletes, they don't get paid in a sense, but they don't get a monetary... Uh, salary for doing what they do. So here's the deal. 
here's what happens. I've seen several times where athletes, college athletes, miss a kick, miss a free throw, miss whatever. They fail at something. They fail. They're between 18 and 22, 23 years old. These, these are still young people. But they're failing at things, and fans are just irate and belittling them like they're professional athletes, death threats. Somehow they get their phone number and they, and they give them a, a voicemail with a death threat or text them or you know, post a picture of something on their Facebook or Twitter. And how demoralizing is it already to fail at something uh, at such a prestigious um, atmosphere or uh, in the line of the game and – then you, after the game, you have to face all these different things on social media. You really don't have to face them. I'm going to go back to this in just a second. You don't have to face them because you don't have to have these Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You don't have to have these. But more than likely, young people have them today and athletes have them today. Not all, but most. So going back to that, I just cannot believe that people would go to that level and make it so personal. Sports, sports should be something that you get away from when you're stressed at work or you have a lot on your mind or you just want to get away from things and, you know, enjoy, enjoy a basketball game or a football game or whatever. Nowadays, with social media, it makes it more personal. And prime example of, of someone missing a kick in a football game or missing a catch or missing a tackle or missing a free throw in basketball or, or whatever the case may be. And it's becoming really, really uh, detrimental, in my opinion, to the sport itself. And media affects that in a negative way. But like I said, there's both sides that go with that, positive and negative, uh, hopefully more positive than negative. And hopefully people understand, listeners out there that maybe have seen this or heard this and are like just totally disgusted with the fact that people would do such a thing. It, regardless of what whether they play professional or college or whatever the case may be, you shouldn't do it anyway. It's it's a sport. You're you're going to live the next day if your team doesn't win. I promise. Okay, so the media, uh, the social media aspect does affect sports in a lot of different ways. Um, now going to the media such as reporters and, and stations like ESPN and CBS and NBC. They can break stories much quicker nowadays because they have those accounts such as Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever, and they can get the news to us, the followers, the individuals that are ingrained in listening and understanding the sport more nowadays. They get to us quicker through those media outlets, and I think that's a great positive thing just because I know it's kind of silly, but back in the day, I say back in the day as in college and only 10 years ago, but my roommate and I, we would, we would try to figure, find out NFL free agency. Okay, NFL free agency at the time was, uh, I want to say um, March something, early March maybe, maybe, maybe middle March. Anyway, we would try to find out, you know, who's going where before and then, you know, telling each, you know, just explain that to each other and, um, you know, giving that conversation and having that amongst us is you know getting us excited about the sport and uh i think that's important because nowadays now you look on twitter and facebook and all these different social medias you know uh that will provide those you know not instantly but way quicker than you know sitting there and watching espn the bottom line or uh watching the news at 11 o'clock at night or whatever the case may be but now you have these different outlets that you can go to that are quote-unquote quicker uh, to get the information um, right away. <clears throat> you know, going back to those fans and those players interacting, you know, everyone finds out about athletes more than ever today, about everything. One, because of the Internet and how that's come about and how that's changed all of us and, and how we do things, essentially. And... Uh, you know, you, you'll hear some stories about older athletes, but not most of what they did or did not do. And, for example, uh, Michael Jordan and his gambling, they talked about it, but it wasn't, a, you know, this huge blown-up thing such as, 
uh, Cam Newton not being a quote-unquote good sport after the Super Bowl in the press conference. Or uh, just recently, uh, Kevin Durant and Dwayne Wade and all these other free agents getting signed big deals or getting traded or, you know, going with these other teams. You know, <clears throat> you heard about them, but they weren't this full-blown week, week-and-a-half talk discussion on sports talk radio shows or radio stations in general or on TV. And so now, nowadays I think uh, you hear more about whether, for example, Denard Robinson, he supposedly was driving – uh, with someone on a passenger side and, and drove into, I think, a lake or something like that and had to be uh, – had to have the cops come and they, they saw he was sleeping in the car and they had to <laughs> wake him up essentially to get him out of the car, him and the person uh, that was in the passenger seat. And would you have heard that back then? I don't know. I can't say that for sure. But I can say that you hear more stories today about athletes – than what you heard in the 90s or even the early 2000s or the 80s and 70s and so on. And you may hear more stuff about those athletes now, but by now our mind is already processed how we are going to think about those athletes. Well, will there always be something that we think about, positive or negative? Sure, but we've already, for example, um, Julius Irving. Maybe there was something about Julius Irving. And, you know, we've always thought, oh, this is a great basketball player and how awesome is he and, and all these great accolades that he did and the things that he did on the basketball court. Maybe he did something off the court that wasn't, wasn't great and we don't know about it maybe until he dies. Or, um, you know, just other athletes in the past that maybe have done something we didn't know about and maybe 20 years later, 30 years later, we find out, oh, so now our judgment of that person is different, and media definitely affects that today when you hear about you know those different athletes. Now, kind of jumping away from that, and you really could use media in this aspect, but I, I kind of want to talk about the NBA just a little bit right now. And the reason why is I am beyond sick of listening to – not necessarily older athletes, but I guess you should say that older NBA players of talking about these new, new upcoming stars and just begrading them and, and not um, giving them props and you know saying negative things. Well, okay, first of all, let's talk about NBA free agency. Kevin Durant just signed uh, with the Golden State Warriors, who are already good, obviously, and. Uh, had, had the best record of the regular season in all-time history, and they, they signed Kevin Durant. So Charles Barkley um, basically said that Kevin Durant is cheating his way to a championship. How does that make you feel? Well, first of all, um, Charles Barkley, I don't know if you remember properly, but I believe you went from uh, – Phoenix to Houston to join Clyde Drexler and Akeem Olajuwon and and Robert Horry and all these guys that I can't remember correctly but had a great amount of talent on that team and were trying to win a championship. We're ring chasing. Well, first of all, before I get into uh, the free agency, ring chasing. <laughs> Who doesn't want to chase rings? Who doesn't want to be the the best at something, at least for a year, who wants to get a ring? I mean, people get rings all the time for being champions, and who doesn't want to be a part of that? Really, who doesn't? Some people in the professional sports and maybe in other um, at the college ranks and high school ranks are bitter about not getting a ring, and rightly so. Good. You, you shouldn't be happy about not getting one, but also, you shouldn't be great people for trying to get better. Kevin Durant went to a way better team. Well, you should, you could say, you could arguably say that he wasn't going to a better team because the Thunder had him up three to one and then lost it. But obviously, they have way more weapons than the Thunder now, and they are a great team. Seventy three and seventy three wins you don't get just by accident. So with Barkley making that statement really really ticked me off and I had to say something about it because it's unbelievable that people 
with great people for trying to become better. Trying to become better is pretty su- subjective, but you have to understand how important it is that people as a professional growth or any type of growth for that matter want to get better. That's a good thing, Charles Barkley, if you're listening out there. That's unbelievable. How, how do you not praise someone for doing that? It, the easy way out? There isn't an easy way out. How about, how about this? How about let me read off some huge trades or free agency signings from back, from, back to all the way 1968 until today. So July 9, 1968, Wilt Chamberlain is traded from the Sixers to the Lakers for three players. And miraculously, they went to the finals the, the next three years, lost two of the three but won the 71-72 season. Why do you think the Lakers made that trade? Why do you think Chamberlain agreed to that trade? Because he wanted to be on a team that won, that wanted to win a ring. So this is not new to any sport, you know, athletes taking less money, by the way, less money. Now, is it only millions and they already have millions of dollars? Yes. But you have to acknowledge that to some extent. I mean, nowadays, when I say nowadays, I mean probably the last 15 years, there's been players that have taken less money when they could, could have gotten more and decided to go and try to be on a winning team to get that ring, get that championship, to kind of cement their legacy, per se, in which, in my opinion, I don't think you need a ring to, be, um, to have this great legacy, by the way. Dan Moreno doesn't have a ring, and he's a great, was a great NFL quarterback. So you don't need a ring to solidify your legacy. Some people do, and that's okay. That's fine. They want to be better. That's great. Do it. Now, going back to those trades and free agent signings, 1987 draft, uh, Pippen gets, Scottie Pippen gets drafted by the, the Seattle Supersonics, and the Bulls trade for Pippen. Wow. Now Pippen is on Jordan's team. And by the way, the... <laughs> the 72-win season of the Bulls, the Bulls had Pippen, Jordan, Tony Kukoc, who's by far uh, in the top ten of best European basketball players of all time, and Dennis Rodman, who was a, a great defensive player and rebounder. Had four people on that team that were really good. Wow, that's interesting. And they won. Hmm. I'm seeing some things that are pretty common with all these different trades and free agent signings. Again, this, doesn't, this isn't a new thing. This has been going on for a long time. Uh, 1975, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar gets traded to the Lakers from the Bucks. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was tired of losing it with the Milwaukee Bucks. And he went to the Lakers. Guess what? They won. 1980, Robert Parrish to the Celtics. McHale drafted by the Celts <clears throat> through a trade by Golden State. Now, some of these you could say, well, they drafted and they became better. That's fine. You can do that. You can say that about a lot of different players. But you know what? You can't, you can't be that type of person that doesn't understand, okay, why are these trades and free agent signings happening? Because they want to get better. I'm okay with all these things happening, but I'm tired of these people that are saying, oh, he should have stayed in Oklahoma City, or Dwayne Wade should have uh, stayed with Miami, or LeBron James should have never went to Miami and stayed in Cleveland, and, and so on. They want to win. What is wrong with that? Nothing. Like I said, Barkley and Drexler went to Houston. Tony Kukoc and Rodman went to um, Chicago. Carl Malone, Gary Payton went to the Lakers later in their career when they wanted to ring chase a little bit and try to get, try to get a championship to solidify their legacy. It happens. How come I, we didn't hear anything about LaMarcus Aldridge going to the Spurs? He's ring chasing, isn't he? I, I like LaMarcus Aldridge. He's a great player. Seems like a great person. No one, no one criticized him. No, it didn't take a whole week of Sports Center and all these different sports radio shows to talk about LaMarcus Aldridge and how he's ring chasing. He should have stayed in Portland and all this stuff. And you know what? You know, you know who started all of this? All of this free agency stuff? Oscar Robinson. He started it all. He started all way back in, I think it was 1976. It's known as the Oscar Robinson rule, where that helps players 
basically have free agency. And so <clears throat> we're going to point the finger and point Oscar Robinson. No, I'm just kidding. We don't want to do that. He's a great player. But it, that's where it started. That's, that's when it happened. That's when things were able to be done like that. <clears throat> so um, these free agent signings, such as uh, you know, Kevin Durant and Dwayne Wade, those things, you know, they want to win. And that goes for everyone that, it, that wants to go win somewhere. Did these guys take less money? Uh, yes, yes, they did. Um, is it only a few million? In which, in our case, every day person that goes to our jobs, is that a lot? Sure. But to them it's not, and that's okay. But you have to understand they did take that cut. They did do it. Would you do it? Would you take a pay cut and go to a, a better company? And just to know that you're better, I, I don't know, it's up to you. But then I will retract that statement and say that we are not like them. We're not even close. It's, it's totally different. There's a lot of different factors that factor into professional athletes and the quote-unquote everyday working person. So I just wanted to go on a little, little uh, I guess, rant per se and discuss NBA free agency and kind of a little bit of the history of it and some different things. But, you know, it all stemmed from Charles Barkley making a quote, cheating yourself to a championship. How is that cheating yourself? And unless you paid every team that you played, paid them and said, hey, listen, I want to win a championship. Here's some money. Let me have this championship. That's, that's probably cheating. I mean, I would say so. But I don't think Kevin Durant's doing that right now. He's going to a team that he thinks is better, which is fine, which technically they were better. They beat him in a seven-game series, four to three. And bettering himself, maybe as a player too and as a person, I don't know. We, we, only time will tell for that. But you guys have to understand, such as Charles Barkley and these other guys, you know, people want to win. <clears throat> and is it okay for you to stay where you're at? Absolutely, too. Reggie Miller stayed where he at. Did he win a championship? No. But he stayed where you're at. And that's okay, too. That's great, too. That's great to be loyal. Do you say Kevin Durant's not loyal? That's pretty subjective, too. He's been there. He was there for a long time, I think seven, eight years in Oklahoma City. Sometimes things don't work out, and you just got to have a new, new change of scenery. That happens with coaches. That happens with players, GMs, all those types of people. So understand that either way, whether you stay or go, you're bettering yourself. You're bettering your team. You're doing the best that you can and bettering uh, that organization, however, what team that is. Well, it seems like it went by pretty fast, in which <laughs> I talked a bunch, so that's probably why. But we're at the conclusion of our show today. And, you know, I just want to remind uh, my, my listeners out there, thank you for listening, by the way, you know, you can check out a ton of different things on our website, not just me, but others as well on thegruelingtruth.net. Check it out. There's tons of things on there, tons of former athletes and interviews. You can listen to myself if, if you really want to do that and put yourself through that torture. But you have other, other opportunities to listen and, and, and hear and see different, different people talking different topics. So you can go on our website, thegruelingtruth.net, like I said. You can find us on Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Music, iTunes, and now iHeartRadio with the search phrase, Grueling Truth. And you can listen to us anytime you want. It, it's, it's always there. So, uh, you know, for, for myself, <laughs> Josh Benjamin, thanks for listening to The Real Deal on The Grueling Truth. Until next time, be real with what you say. <laughs>